morning everyone. Welcome back to Young and Hungry. This is Sir Andy here. So today we're in New Orleans, Louisiana to check out all the food and all the sites that we have here. We're gonna get to a lot of food. We're gonna check out the Café du Monde. We're gonna try out their coffee. Uh, we're gonna, definitely gonna have to try out their beignets. We're definitely gonna try out the, the fresh seafood here, the oysters here, the charbroil oysters, the raw seafood oysters, the seafood platter and everything. And right behind me is where I'm staying. It's I think by far one of the most haunted hotels here in the French Quarter in New Orleans. So let's go check it out. So they're putting up like Halloween decoration. They're halfway through it, it's not done yet. But it's quite creepy in here, I gotta say. This is the, the first floor. There's an elevator up to the second and third floor. There's only three floors here. And let me check this out. This beautiful courtyard here. There you go. There's only three floor, first, second, and third. That room 305 is uh, is the infamous room. It's like it was where you know house the rising sun, you know, originated from. You know. So, so this house is old. It was built somewhere in like the 1800s. Um, it was owned by a single family for a long time and then uh, it was sold and then it was a brothel. It was the number one brothel here in New Orleans uh, in around like the 1940s, like during World War II. So a lot of sailors, a lot of like uh, military folks would come and would enjoy their time here at this hotel. So it became a hotel somewhere in the 1980s. So it's been owned by one family since then. But this was the infamous, the notorious number one brothel house in New Orleans. Let's keep checking it out. So I could easily take the, the stairs up to the second floor to my room. But I want you to experience this elevator with me. So this elevator sure gave me the creep, uh, creepy feeling last night. I arrived here at 11.30, you know, with all that ghost tour right outside the hotel. I was like, ugh. Let's go to the second floor and I want you to hear this. Okay, I want you to hear this. It's my, it was my first 10 minutes. coming out so there are like a few rooms over there that leads to the courtyard is to the third floor here's my room out here it's right out here there's room 203 right over there there's a room down there and this is my room 204 so we're gonna check out the room right now and especially this room it is the only room in the hotel that the, the handle doesn't go down to open, you have to go up. Man, it's my luck, eh? Let's go. Oh, here we go. This room is not too bad at all. It's really clean. It, they keep it really, really cold all the time. Or is it the AC? <laughs> I mean, it's clean. Yeah, the, it's real small. The rate is about $120. That's a really small and cute bathroom they keep it really clean though but that's what I like about it okay. got everything that you need a little mirror this is right across from the room uh, I mean from the bed there's a mirror right across there's a mirror right across from the bed which is a little bit awkward and there's a television right there pretty cool so one thing about this place is that it's so old so sometimes if I hear, or if somebody, you know, like walks on the hallway or somewhere near my room, I would feel and hear the footsteps. And it's really, really noticeable. It feels like somebody is walking, which is right behind me. And that freaked me out last night for a few times. I was like, oh, there's somebody walking in a room. I'm like, no, there's just somebody on the other side of the wall just walking on the hallway, in the hallway. Whew. 
scared the crap out of me if you're done. I didn't sleep until 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm a firm believer in science. I don't believe in any of the ghost stories, but you know, it's get, it gets kind of creepy in here for sure. I hope nothing happens though. All right, now let's go eat. I don't know if you can hear me. There's a jazz band, which is playing amazing music. There's a jazz band right behind me. It's just about 20 feet away. Uh, it's quite a loud. And behind me, there's behind this Cafe du Mont, uh, there's a train track just right behind it. So sometimes they, they blow their horn. So I apologize for the quality of the audio, okay? But this morning, we got some coffee, okay? Some original French coffee and some beignets. The Cafe du Mont. So the, the total, this is about for all the beignets, you know, it's about $3.50. For the coffee, it's about $2.50. Extremely affordable for something so famous, so legendary. Oh yeah, we're gonna try out the, the coffee without any sugar. I, I didn't want to ruin the taste. Oh, it's milk sugar. Wow. Oh. Yes, it's very good. A little bit bitter. Kind of sweet aftertaste. Real hot. It's pumping hot. Piping hot. Oh. Man, it sure wake you up. Ooh. Not too strong though. Oh my god, you have to take a look at these. So there are about five of them in this bag. Go. This is my first time having this. Me a you know, one of the, the big, you know, uh, fried dough that I did in my first episode. It's just topped with a lot of, you know, sugar powder or powdered sugar. Like, this is so New Orleans, you know. Just sitting right outside Cafe du Monde, having a beignet with coffee in the morning. Listening to a great, great jazz band playing on the side of the street. And there's a train just blowing past behind us. This is insane. This is so cool. <laughs> Baby will fill you up. It's actually a lot of food for three dollars and fifty cents. Let's go one more time. It's everywhere. The powdered sugar is everywhere. Just look how that powdered sugar just falls apart, man. Very doughy on the inside. The outside is crispy and it's filled with, it's not filled, but it's covered in powdered sugar. 
Definitely, maybe not a morning breakfast food, but it's good. Any day, any time food, any time of the day food. Actually, you know what? Pick it up. Oh my God, it's super covered. Oh my God, it's everywhere. Last bite, oh, it's so good. So I'm at Mr. Ed's Seafood and Oysters here in New Orleans. It is so, it, this is the food here, it's incredible. I just saw how they cook my food, it's just incredible. I order uh, you know, multiple different kind of you know, different oysters and cook different ways. So I cannot wait to show you guys. Food is here. That is not all for me, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, this, man. This is the gator. We have big portions in general, obviously. Oh. Some of them come on larger platters. This right. is the smallest uh, way to get the uh, each type of these oysters, though. You certainly <laughs> want all of them. So. Look at all these. These are going to be the uh, three and three. The ones with bacon here are going to be the Rockefeller. The Rockefeller. Yeah, and, and they always look really good. These look particularly good for this. It's, uh, these are our... Uh, on a, most uh, coveted charcoal oh, oysters. Oh my god. Sit those in there Is there an order that I should go about or No, certainly not. Certainly not. But that's all the all of our best flavors really there. Right. In general. Alright, cool. Yeah, Thank you very much, alright? Sure, sure. Enjoy. Alright. All the food is here. We have the raw oysters. We have a half dozen raw oysters here. Here we have the the infamous New Orleans charbroy oysters right here, half a dozen. I can't finish a dozen, so. And right here we have the fried alligator meat. I've never had alligator meat, so this is gonna be great. I just know it. Okay, and this right here we have the uh, oyster cooked two way, oyster Rockefeller, which are the one with the bacon pieces on top. One, three, and five. Okay, the two, four, and six are the Binneville. Binville? I mean, either way, it's gonna be great. I've never had it. And these two are just bread, just like big chunks of bread dipped in garlic butter. It's just soaked in garlic, I can see it. All right, let's try this one right away. This is the fried alligator meat. Oh, big chunks. Oh. I mean, the, the, the covering is very bready, of course, yeah. Breadcrumbs. But the meat is so tender, it's bouncing. Really bouncing. Wow. Let's try a big piece right here. Yo! Oh my god, it's so good. Oh, it's so fresh. There's no gamey texture at all, gamey with flavor. It's soft, it's tender, it's sweet. Wow. That's a, it has a, a spring to it. When you bite into it, it springs back at you. Wow. And this sauce, man, it's, it's 
tangy, it's a little bit citrusy. It's sweet and a little bit spicy too. You know, of course I, I put some lemon juice, uh, lemon juice on it. Oh. Wow. Phenomenal, out of this world. Alright, next, uh, we gotta hit this bat boy, you know it. Oh, let's go for the biggest one here. Oh. No smell. Fresh, it's cold, it's been chilled. This is cocktail sauce right here. Oh, this is some, uh, look at how cute this pork is. This is horseradish. So they give you a little bit of horseradish, right? Some cocktail sauce. Just hit it, hit it with a, Just hit it with a hint of lemon juice. Just like that, just a hint, okay? You gotta cut the abducting muscle right there. There you go. Oh, let's look at that. Oh my god. It's fresh, it's chilled. It's sweet. That cocktail sauce is just light. It's made in house. It's just subtle. The horseradish is fresh. It's got a kick to it. Wow. Really goes really well with the, the lemon juice. Oh my god. I gotta go in for a second, guys. I gotta go in for a second. I mean, just look at this. Throw a little bit of this on here. Some horseradish. Come in. Look at that. Get it off the shell. Cheers. <laughs> oh, the horse <laughs> Oh my god. All right. Up next is the legendary charbroiled oysters, okay? This is what New Orleans is known for. Besides the gumbo, the jambalaya, gumbo, the jambalaya, fried chicken of the south. Oh man, this is one of their specialties here. Not of just this restaurant, but this this area, this region. Alright, All right, we're gonna grab the, the biggest one here. Oh. Wow, well, they put a piece of lemon here, so I guess you know, put some lemon on it. Just a tiny bit of lemon. Oh, look at all this cheese, man. There's all these Parmesan cheese and garlic butter and that's some, some thyme on there. Oh my god. You can taste the charcoal. You can taste the smokiness. You can taste the grill. But not any kind of not in a filthy way, but it's so good. The smokiness is literally inside the oysters. Oh my god. 
uh, it travels, that, that smokiness, it travels up your nose and it just elevates you. Wow. My God. Wow. Uh, let's try one more. Look, look at my hand. <laughs> oh. so crispy. Like some part of the oyster is burnt so it's burnt to a crisp. Wow. Well this might be my my favorite way to cook an oyster now. <clears throat> so we do something very similar in Vietnam where we put like processed cheese on oysters and we grill them or sometimes we put like a scallion and oil and peanut on top. And we just grill them. This is just Parmesan cheese and thyme. Oh, All right, oh yeah. That's the shot. This is the shot. Right Do I just knock the back? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, and then, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of have to experience it. Right. Oh, boy. So the waiter, uh, he just brought out the oyster sh shooter. Oh, I can see a little oyster right here. Right there. See that? This is a uh, pickle green bean. This is blood, uh, Bloody Mary with some black pepper on top. Oh man, they put a little bit of vodka on here. All right, here we go. Cheers. Oyster shooter with vodka and pick a green bean. Oyster is fresh, of course. It's pretty good. The, the Bloody Mary, it, it's like... I've never <coughs> been a fan of Bloody Mary. It's like drinking soup. It's like, you know, taking a shot of your soup. It's, it's very interesting, uh, to say the least. Alright, moving on. We gotta try this. So here we got the oysters cooked halfway, uh, two ways. Uh, Rockefeller and Benneville. So we're gonna try the, the oyster Rockefeller first, okay? It's gonna be one of these with the bacon bits. Oyster, you know, they put uh, some cheese on top, probably Parmesan cheese again. This is bacon, like crispy bacon bit. Let me try the bacon first. Yeah, crispy bacon bit. Oh my god. Oh, you can see this. Okay, let's go. Cheesy, buttery, garlicky. Oh, the bacon's really add to, it really adds to like a different texture in the oyster. It brings that crispiness and that crunchiness into the oyster. So weird, I've never had it, but it's so good. Moving on, this is the uh, Oyster Bienville. 
Again, I see a little bit of crawfish, like a small crawfish tail right here. Okay, top it off with a lot of Parmesan cheese. Yeah, just a lot of Parmesan cheese. I see some garlic, I see some onion, I see some small bacon bits, probably just from the Oyster Rockefeller. Oh my god. Oyster and crawfish. Let's go. Oh, it's a little bit salty at the end for some reason. Oh, it was so good. It was like a roller coaster ride where you're going slowly up, up the flavor scale. And then boom, it takes off. Like it's overly salty for some reason. But overall, the texture is really good. Wow, it just at the end there, it was really sharp. Salt. Wow. Hey, what a fantastic lunch that we just had. The oysters were amazing. I love that place, you know, Mr. Ed's Seafood and Oysters. So now we're heading to, uh, I think it's reputed to be the oldest bar and shop in the United States. It was built somewhere in between 1722 to 1733, uh, somewhere between that range. But it's one heck of a structure, one heck of a bar. We have to check it out. Let's go. Sorry, one last time, what is this drink? A voodoo daiquiri. A voodoo daiquiri. Yep, great awesome. daiquiri with apple and bourbon. That's awesome. Yep. So I'm inside the Lafitte and Blacksmith Shop and Bar. Uh, just got the voodoo daiquiri here, one of the famous drinks here. Um, and this place is just incredible. You can feel the history. So this used to be a, like a hangout spot for a lot of privateers, a lot of sailors, pirates too. And it's rumored that the Lafitte's brothers um, used to do like, you know, the, a lot of smuggling here. Yeah, you gotta look at the history of this place. It's like wonderful. Wow. Oh man, I'm such a lightweight. I had half a voodoo daiquiri at Lafitte's bar and I'm already like, I'm feeling the buzz, man. I'm feeling hammered. So I'm just heading back to the hotel right now and that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up, share it to your friend and friends and family. I would appreciate it very much if you subscribe to this video. As always, Keep it up, never give up. Stay young, stay hungry. This is Sir Andy. I'll see you on the next one.